Recently, I wandered around a city to solve a fake mystery. It's my understanding that this game is held all around the world and all you need to participate once you've bought the tickets is a smartphone and perhaps a bit of fitness. But I'll get to that. Now, this game is really secret. My friend bought tickets months in advance and you didn't get to know much until 24 hours before the actual game. The only thing we knew before the day was that there would be teams, prizes to be won, and that it was a mystery. And that was basically it. Also that each team had to pick a team name, there was competitions for best dressed up, and also a competition for the best dog. We weren't told what it would entail, how to solve the mystery, or what the mystery was. Although, in fairness, the game did have Ripper kind of in the name, so it was fair to guess that that was something to do with it. I should also mention that there were no active cases and no risk management techniques in place in the city where this game was played. Everything was pretty safe, so that's why you don't see anyone wearing masks. Into the game itself. My friends and I needed to take public transport into the city in order to get to the place, which we only found out, by the way, 24 hours before the game began. We also needed to take public transport in because the place was very inaccessible by car. There were no parking spots or anything around. It was right on the side of a very busy street. So, yeah, a bus it was. We then had to walk from the bus stop to the starting point. We knew we were in the right place when we got there because of the 30 or so groups huddled around in circles around smartphones. <laughs> this is when we learnt that the whole game was played via GPS on a smartphone, kind of like Pokemon Go, and we couldn't download the app until we were actually physically there. And by we, I mean my friends, I don't have a smartphone, which I kind of regretted, but we'll get to that. So when we opened up the app, we got this message. What the media don't know is we'd been in contact with the killer since the last murder. Or rather, they've been in contact with us. A note was mailed to the precinct two days ago, sealed with a red wax stamp. It reads as follows. <clears throat> Dear boss, your boys think they're close, but they haven't fixed me just yet. It makes me laugh when they pretend to be so clever and talk about people and think they're on the right track. I'm done with cops, and I shan't stop ripping until I'm caught or they're gone. Grand work my last job was. He has no time to squeal. My knife is so nice and sharp. I want to get to work again right away. You will soon hear of me with my funny little games. After all... One job remains unfinished. <laughs> I don't know what you'll make of it. It could be an hoax. God, I hope it is. But I can't take that risk. What the Ripper did to these men, well, let's just say they researched the original Ripper well. We need this bastard caught and fast. Not just to save face in front of the public, no, but to get justice for our boys. Which brings me to you, Investigator. As much as I hate to admit it, I'm not sure I can entirely trust my precinct at the moment. They're hungry for results and some don't seem to care how they get it. I need you to look into the murders, talk to the witnesses and find the monster. I need a suspect, the murder weapon and a motive for these killings to be certain we've got the right person. We've narrowed it down to five weapons at or near the various crime scenes. A scalpel, a butcher's cleaver, an antique knife, a rusted bayonet blade and an hunting knife. Our own investigation revealed two additional clues at the first and third crime scenes. A wristband for, for the White Chapel Club and a receipt for an exotic dancer in one of the victim's names. We believe there may be similar clues at the second and fourth scenes yet to be uncovered. So I'm granting you access to those sites. Tread carefully, investigator. The streets of this town are fraught with danger. And a simple mistake may mean it's your body we find next in the gutter. Good luck. And with that, this map came up and we had to walk to each one of those little squares. Some were suspects, some were crime scenes, some were clues. 
and you had to get within 20 meters of each one to access it. And some squares couldn't be accessed until other clues or suspects or things had already been unlocked. Okay, we, we can't do anything here, we need more clues. So it took a bit of debating to figure out how we were going to start. We were just kind of given the map and told, go. There wasn't really any direction to start in, which I suppose is a good thing, but we didn't really understand it. But one of my friends took charge and we were off. I should say it wasn't her being bossy or anything. One person had to be the leader of each group. One person had to hold the main phone in which you put all the answers in, which I'll get to and be the director of which suspect and clue you'd go to. The other members could download the app on their phone to, to see the map and the um, statements and everything, but they just couldn't interact with it as well. I think this was so that you couldn't divide and conquer. You couldn't just say, right, you go get that witness, you go get that clue, and we'll meet back here and, and finish the game in a short amount of time. You had to walk as a group to each clue and suspect. Which is why I think I would have liked to have my own smartphone in front of me as well so that I could see what was going on, but I ended up liking just obeying what everyone else said. So it worked out pretty well. I should also say that this city is completely foreign to me, not in a different country. I'm not familiar with it and I also have no sense of direction, which is probably a good thing that I wasn't the leader because I would go, let's go that way and actually need to go that way. I would get lost in an empty room, honestly. Oh, but there was one cool thing where there was crossings at some of the roads, like T crossings like this, and there would be cars from all directions, and they'd all stop, and the pedestrians could cross in whatever direction they liked, and I thought that was just so cool. I'm sure that's totally a normal thing to anyone who lives in a city, but it was just, it was amazing to me. Also because of not needing to be looking at a phone the whole time, I got to look at the architecture around the place. Oh gosh, it was just so pretty. The most enjoyable part for me. Anyway, back to the game. Costumes. It was encouraged that each group dress up, and basically every group did. I don't think I saw a group that wasn't in some sort of dress up. My friends aren't that creative or decisive, so I encouraged us to wear cloaks. It's sort of costumey, but not really, and also it's not that committal, and you can wear whatever you want to be comfortable underneath, which ended up being a good thing. We all got to wear comfortable shoes, which was definitely a good way to go. But other people got so into it. There were a lot of Sherlock's, you know, with the brown coat and the deer stalker. A lot of Scooby-Doo games. Sometimes the Scooby-Doo was played by an actual dog. There was one group that I saw that were dressed as old-timey constables with the tall helmets and the mustaches. There were also some people I saw that kind of looked like modern detectives that you'd see in modern crime shows. My personal favourite was that there was a group with one person, clearly Sherlock, with the brown coat and the deer stalker, and then his friends, were behind him in one colour. One was blue with a funny looking hat and one was red with a funny looking hat and you weren't really sure what was going on until you get a little bit closer and you saw that they had a sign that said Sherlock's Gnomes. <laughs> I loved it! There was actually several times that, and it was always at crossings, that our friends would just be waiting to cross the road to, you know, get to a, a suspect. Some stranger would stop and ask us what was going on because they'd seen so many people around in so many costumes and they were just completely caught unawares and had no idea what was going on. And it's funny that they asked us every time, but my friend and I mused that it might be because cloaks are a little bit less intimidating of a costume than, say, Sherlock's gnomes. When you got to a suspect, the first thing that they would do is ask you a riddle, and if you answered the riddle correctly, then you'd get their statement. The riddles were really easy too. One was, when I'm young, I am tall. When I am old, I am short. When I'm alive, I glow. Because of your breath, I die. What am I? And then you had to type in the answer to the riddle, and it would bring up the statement of the suspect or whoever you were talking to. The statement looked like this. I've edited it so that if you do end up playing the game it doesn't give away too many spoilers, but I thought I'd just show you to show what it looks like. Basically there's the name of the person at the top and then whether or not they're a suspect. There was the statement and the option next to that was to interrogate, which I'll explain in a second. Then at the bottom of the screen you could vote whether or not they were innocent or guilty. Or really whether or not you thought they were involved in the crime. Your leader would read out the statement, it wasn't recorded like the very first one was, and then you had to decide as a group whether or not the suspect was involved with the crime or not, 
and vote accordingly. With the interrogation option there were a few questions that you could ask that were already pre-written, you could select which question you wanted, ask it, and then it would give an answer. This is an example, right here. You could ask a question and then it would give you an answer. Sometimes the questions were a little bit useless, like the person would say, I was with Joe Bloggs at the time of the crime. And then one of the questions might be, where were you at the time of the crime? And if you selected that, they would say, I was with Joe Bloggs at the time. But you had limited questions, so it was really pointless to ask something that was already in their statement. So just, just a tip for you, if you end up playing this game, just read the statement and read the questions carefully. Don't go wasting questions on things that are already in the statements. You can always access the statements and the questions after you've walked away from them as well to go back and say, well, this statement doesn't quite match that statement, or yes, these statements match each other, or oh, remember Joe Bloggs said that he was with Timmy. Sometimes the questions would give hints about the other suspects and who they thought had done it. And sometimes instead of suspects, you'd go to crime scenes and you'd get a description of the crime scene. Anyway, the game ended up being a lot of walking. You see this map? It looks small, but don't let it fool you. It took us probably four hours to wander around this thing. There, we had a lot of breaks, to be fair, but we needed them. Honestly, it may not seem like much, but as a small country girl, I was very overwhelmed by all the noise and the people, and it was just... It was a lot. I was very overwhelmed and very tired at the end of the day. Luckily, you are allowed to pause the game whenever you want, for as long as you need. You can stop for lunch or whatever, but you have to go back to exactly where you were when you paused the game to start playing. You can't pause the game, walk to a suspect and then press play and try to shorten your time. Although, my group came 25th out of a few hundred people, so... But yeah, my thoughts on the day. My overall thought was how tired I was. I'm excessively jealous of the people that I saw go past on those electric rental scooters that you can get sometimes. Although I must say it's very odd to be zoomed past by a small army of Sherlock Holmeses on electric scooters. Another thing is that I wish I'd understood the game more. I wish I'd understood the game better before taking part like what was going to happen, what was expected. I also recommend taking as many breaks as you need to just sit go through the notes. I actually saw a couple of groups who had actual notepads, which I think I recommend as well. But I recommend taking as many breaks as you can to just sit and mull over the case and remember that it's a game and it's meant to be fun and to stay hydrated and eat and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, that's my mystery game. I hope you enjoyed this video, which was very different from my normal content. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! that our friends would just be waiting to cross the road to, you know, get to a, a suspect. Hey, that's maybe why the chicken crossed the road. And they were just completely caught underwears and had n underwears? <laughs>